I want to talk about the idea of a labor shortage in Canada. In my last video on immigration, I briefly mentioned that I don't really think there is a labor shortage, even though it's frequently cited by government and industry as the reason that we need more temporary workers. I got several comments from people insisting that there is a labor shortage in some sectors, most notably a video response from Gen X Albertan, who occasionally stitches my videos to add context, more information, or criticism, which I appreciate because it's always done in a way that's intelligent and well-informed. Here's a clip from that video. And he says in his videos that he hasn't really seen labor shortages, but I have very much so in construction. We are having trouble getting trades on site because they do not have enough people to complete the jobs that they have. Basically, construction saw a big increase in job vacancies from January to July of last year, suggesting a labor shortage. I do want to push back on this idea a bit, because while job vacancy stats are often used as proof that a labor shortage exists, I think labor shortages in Canada are really more of an enduring myth than they are an actual thing. First, we need to clarify that a labor shortage can mean a few different things. In the most general sense, it can mean that there's literally not enough people available to perform labor. Usually this isn't what people mean, but it's relevant to the discussion because we were talking about the government using the labor shortage to justify uncapping work hours for international students, which would suggest a shortage even in unskilled labor since students aren't required to have any particular skill set to get a study permit. A labor shortage can also be used to mean a skill shortage, meaning that there aren't enough people who actually know how to do the job you need done. A labor shortage could also be from a profit perspective, meaning that there aren't enough qualified people to do the job at the price you're willing to pay. It's hard to really quantify this, but in my opinion, it's those last two definitions, particularly the third one, that a lot of companies in Canada are grappling with, especially construction right now, which I'll get into a bit later. But this is really more of a chronic issue with Canadian business culture than it is with the availability of workers. Normally, if you need more people to do a job, there are a few things you can do. You can raise the wages being offered to convince more people to go into that line of work or to choose your company over others. You can invest in training new people for the skills they need to do the job. Or you can invest in new technology or equipment that increases the productivity of each worker so you don't need as many people to do the work. But in Canada, businesses are generally not doing any of these things to address their supposed labor shortage issues. From StatCan data, we see that in the first half of the year when job vacancies were increasing, the average wage being offered actually decreased slightly, which seems a bit strange if companies are supposedly desperate for workers. We also see that there's been a long-term declining trend in employer investments into worker training. Companies are basically expecting to hire people with all the skills they need coming in. As for investment in equipment and technology, that's also been stagnant for the last 30 years. The only thing we've seen temporary growth in is structures, which is in large part due to growth in natural resource industries. We're not investing in worker productivity, we're just investing in the actual infrastructure we need to extract resources. Compared with other OECD countries, Canada lags behind almost all of them in access to productive capital per worker as well as economic output per worker. Compared to the US, we're lagging way behind in investments in material and equipment as well as intellectual property products. In May, StatCan released a report casting doubt on the idea of a labor shortage, showing that in general there were enough unemployed people already in Canada to fill the job vacancies, but employers weren't hiring them, suggesting that companies don't really think there's a labor shortage either. As economist Jim Stanford put it, if you were really short of labor and you couldn't find someone to do that minimum wage job, then why aren't you either increasing the wage or trying to replace the work with machinery? Neither are happening, which suggests to me that employers in general are quite happy with the current state of affairs no matter how much they complain about labor being in short supply. However, in Canada, the government has also facilitated another option to address job vacancies, which is to just hire a temporary foreign worker to do the job instead. And as we've seen, companies are choosing this option more and more, as the size of temporary worker programs have increased enormously over the past 15 to 20 years. We've also seen that the job vacancies reported in the last years are mostly for jobs with low or no education requirements and low wages, with trade certificates and higher education making up a much smaller proportion. In general, the labor shortage seems to be driven by low-skilled jobs which anybody could do, which suggests to me that we're not short on labor, companies just want cheaper workers that are easier to exploit. That would explain why companies like Tim Hortons and McDonald's franchises are major users of the TFW program, supposedly because they can't find people with the skill set required to pour coffee. I don't really buy that because you just hold the cup and tilt the pot. It's not that hard. I did it as a teenager. Now, this last point I'm going to make is basically conjecture and is a hunch I have based on personal experience and a variety of other data that I've observed, but it seems to me that between the 2008 financial crisis and the rapid expansion of temporary worker programs, companies in Canada have gotten used to the idea that they can hire any skill set they want at any time they want at whatever price works for them. They've essentially lost the knowledge of how to compete for skilled labor and are confusing a situation that's historically quite normal for some kind of critical shortage of labor. Pretty much any hiring manager who's 40 or younger doesn't know how to compete for skilled workers because they've never had to do it before. Again, based on my personal experience, I would say that anybody with any kind of in-demand skill set probably has some funny stories for you about how bad companies have gotten at recruiting. But over the past 15 years, the government has been using immigration policy to support business in this kind of behavior. If you look at the stats, immigration targets seem mostly geared towards ensuring there's always a slight oversupply of workers. Basically, the government is setting the balance in the labor market to ensure that workers are always competing for jobs and that companies never have to compete for workers. As an example, 2019 was a record year for job creation in Canada with about 320,000 jobs created in 12 months. However, we still ended the year with more unemployed people in the country because the overall size of the labor force grew faster than our employment did. 
The difference in the last few years is that with companies demanding lower wage workers, we've seen a rapid increase in non-permanent residents like temporary foreign workers and international students. Hiring a TFW is supposed to require a labor market impact assessment to show that the company was unable to hire someone already in Canada to fill the role, but the requirements are pretty minimal and lately the approval rate has risen to nearly 100%. On top of that, the government has recently expanded the program to allow employers to hire up to 30% of their workforce through the low-wage TFW program if their industry has a demonstrated labor shortage. Again, I question the idea that fast food restaurants and coffee shops are unable to find capable workers within the existing workforce. Circling back to the alleged labor shortage in construction specifically, the article referenced in Gen X Albertans video says that we're experiencing a shortage of construction workers. But it also references this StatCan report, which says that from January to July, employment in construction decreased by 71,000 jobs. This is kind of weird, because if there was truly a shortage of labor, you'd think everyone would still be employed as job vacancies grew, rather than employment in the sector decreasing. Looking at the labor force stats, we see that in the same period, the size of the labor force grew by over 250,000 people, and the number of unemployed people increased by about 120,000. Meanwhile, investment in construction dropped by almost $2 billion, which was driven entirely by a decline in residential construction. To me, that doesn't sound like a shortage of labor, it sounds like a mismatch between how workers value their labor and what employers in construction are willing or able to pay. The way I see it is that construction right now has fallen into a sort of price trap. Their input costs like materials and builders' loan interest have gone up, and at the same time people are qualifying for less debt to buy homes with, so they're unable to pay what they could in the past, which means projects are getting shelved because there's no way to make them profitable. The core issue there, in my opinion, is that there's a lot of non-productive rent-seeking behavior that adds to the cost of home construction. Land speculators demand windfall profits to allow housing to be built, and governments charge huge development fees to anyone who wants to build more units. There's also a huge amount of red tape that needs to be dealt with before construction can even begin, which adds a lot to the cost and timeline of construction. During the past 15 years, when interest rates were falling and home prices kept going up and up, there was enough cash flow in the system to make this work. But now, at historically normal interest rates, all those costs together are too much for the market to bear. In my opinion, if we need to trim costs from housing construction, it's better to cut at some of those non-productive entities rather than try and save costs on the actual productive labor that gets homes built. Anyway, it was a bit of a long-winded answer, but I hope that helps to clarify what I mean when I say I don't really think there's a labor shortage. Also, Happy New Year.